There is a lot on health and wellness, and I'm a huge advocate of our physical health being a direct relationship to our mental and emotional health. And we talked about this last week as we talked about meaning and significance in our lives. This week, we want to dive into 12 tenets of wellness to keep you truly alive. Oh, you're just keeping with the holiday season. Oh, yeah. On the 12th day of wellness, my true love came to me. <laughs> Mama says namaste. Mama says namaste. Making a family can be easy and fun. Oh, yeah, but raising a family can be a whole different story. From spouses to kids to the crazy daily grind, life often directs us away from connection and more into reactive chaos. If you're tired of that cycle and are seeking something beyond the picket fence blues, this is the show for you. I'm Ashley. And I'm Nathan. And we're here to take you from chaos to clarity by bringing awareness and intention into your home, not waiting for one day, and highlighting how the the uniqueness uniqueness in each of us strengthens strengthens all of us. Take a deep breath in and let's start brand new day. With Mama Says Namaste. So yes, on the twelfth day of wellness, we've got our twelve days of (laughs) twelve yoga moves. Da, 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 da. Eleven so, bubble baths. <laughs> Ooh, those sound good. Ooh, <laughs> maybe we should do a theme for all of December. The twelve of whatever. Twelve things Ten of relaxation. Deep massages. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Oh, they keep going, right? I, and I'm, some chocolate for you and me. Ooh, that's beautiful. Keep going. We are so going to be doing something along the lines of that. Oh, that should be fun. <laughs> like the twelve tenets of pampering yourself or yeah, something. Yeah, that'd be fun. All right, so as you got our little brainstorm there, we're gonna dive into our twelve tenets of wellness today. Um we have, this is also something that was so inspired just from the books we've been reading recently. We shared last week that we uh, are, we just finished, um, I just finished uh, Victor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. And you read that with your eyeballs on paper? I did. The old school way. Old school way. Didn't listen to it in the car? No. Mm-hmm. And you? Man, what did I just finish? I just finished Live, Laugh, and Love? No. What? Peace, love, and healing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Peace, love, and healing. That's close. Peace, love, and healing by yeah. Dr. Bernie Siegel. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. I feel healed and peaceful. <laughs> well, a lot of what we are talking about today came directly from that book, from Peace, Love, and Healing. Oh, geez, I'm glad I read it then. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm, I know. I'm See, ready. I, clearly you can tell when Nathan's coming blind into a podcast episode to, get, to give his two cents without knowing what I've written. Um, today is one of those days. It's like every day for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, you just it's like john o'donohue i love to live as the river flows Scared carried by, by the, the surprise of, of its, its own, own unfolding. unfolding and what all these little women in my house have to say <laughs> right well we uh just a behind the scenes i mean oftentimes when we're doing the podcast i've told you before we often do it uh real time so we're doing it the day of often when we publish and um and sometimes we do a whole podcast and then I write a blog that kind of goes along with it. Sometimes I write a whole blog and then we riff on it on the podcast. And so um, today is it one of those days where I wrote the blog and now Nathan gets to um, blindly hear it as you do. And I bet you listeners won't ever know the difference. (laughs) Until we just confessed it. (laughs) Yeah, if we have any numbers in there, you know we're organized. Right. And because we are organized and we have 12 to go through, we're going to jump right in. Oh, these are to talk about fam. Okay, <laughs> these are our tenets to wellness. And what I mean by that is really looking at how can you be fully well and whole. Um, there, there can be some frustration around people about um, this idea of, well, somebody is a whole person or not a whole person. Um, we're all whole people. What we're aware of may be different. We may have some, we may have some, that's a good way to say it. We may have some shattered fragments or gaps in who we are that are things that we don't want to deal with. And those things manifest physically, emotionally, and mentally in our, in our lives. And so, um, yeah, we do want to look at looking at the whole aspect of who you are. And that means all the parts of you, the, the, the wonderful parts and the messy ones. And, um, and so we want to look for how can we create enough momentum with who you are that you really recognize how to live. And we're going to dig into this a little bit as we go. So number one, do things that validate your own worth. Mm. 
one of my favorite questions that I like to ask, especially adult men, what do you do for fun? Mm. And, mm-hmm. and it just, I mean, that's a real, that shows you what, what people invest in their self-worth, what they enjoy. And it's a question that oftentimes knocks them, knocks them uh, for a loop. But yeah, it just made me think of that. Yeah. Since I don't know what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> right. And it does. Yeah. I mean, looking at what things validate who you are, what things bring joy to your life and give you joy, fulfillment or purpose. Are you creating a life that you truly thrive in? Or is your life just this reaction mode to, you know, hopefully one day get there? Well, are you creating a life that has space for you to find your worth or practice that or refresh it? I mean, you know, worth is kind of a, it's a, it's kind of like a, um, man, what's the best analogy for worth? I don't know. Where are you going? Well, where do you get your worth? Like mine doesn't come from one thing, you know, it's like, it's a, it's a motley crew of flavors of things that I do. Like I, I get self-worth from helping people. I get self-worth from giving advice. I get self-worth from getting advice sometimes, Mm -hmm. um, or reading, reading something and saying, ah, okay, well that makes me feel better about this situation that I was struggling with or whatever. You know, it's, it's not just a clear, you don't go to work and get your (laughs) self-worth. That's gr- that's a great idea or a great thought there. Yeah, you you're right. I mean, for when I think about how do I how do I validate my own worth? I validate my own worth when, um, like, one thing that I do is pretty religiously. Almost every single night, Nathan and I both take showers to wash off our day, yeah. and um, and I enjoy having a shower by myself, which doesn't always happen in, you know, campgrounds and lots of kiddos and everything else. You know, I'm not always showering by myself. When I go and I say, I'm taking a break, I'm doing a shower all by myself. I go in there and um, years and years ago in 2014, 2015, I did Reiki and I, I did the first level of Reiki, became a Reiki practitioner and um, didn't know if I was going to do anything with it. Uh, and it was so incredible in healing and um in and valuable for me at a a very difficult time in our lives and it was it was the perfect timing for me to learn it and because it it was something that I was able to work on with myself and with Nathan as we navigated um navigated uh, some big a terrific explosion of our reality. <laughs> yeah, ex- that's a great way of saying it. Yeah, our reality had exploded in front of us and it helped us. So now, one of the ways that I validate my own self worth is when I go in that shower, I reiki myself and I do energy work on myself. And there's something about the movement of water and that just connection with it. And I close my eyes and I get lost. And it doesn't matter if I'm this, in a campground shower and, um, or, or, you know, or if I'm in a fancy, you know, fancy hotel, it it doesn't matter. My eyes are closed. I'm, I feel the water and the, the movement of energy in my body. And it's a beautiful thing. I validate my own worth and well being, and I send love to every part of who I am. You nurture your essence. Right. And that's where, you know, taking care of yourself or knowing how to keep yourself full is such an important technique to have a full life. Right. Like I remember when I was zapped from real estate, you know, my thing was to go and float and that would just give me the window to recover and just have an hour to not have to think about anybody else and not have to think about anything. And it was just that that gave me that uh, that freedom when I needed it and looking for those things and just trying those things. You know, for some people, it's a bike ride or running. But I warn you, don't run just at a wild double dip. You know, I like to run and it's good for me and it clears my head. Well, not everybody is, you know, some people are just grinding on their life while they're running. So you yeah. double grinding on your body and your mind while you're running. Yeah. So run for fun. Yeah. I mean, another thing, another thing that you mentioned, though, is having conversations with others. And boy, that's a great reminder as well, because I will oftentimes, me especially out of anyone in the family, I can get into work mode and I can go for a a stretch where I haven't talked to anybody outside of my household. Um, And when I hop on my calls for 48 days, when I'm doing my coaching sessions with clients through Mama Says Namaste, and when I am... um, 
working on uh, or when I'm out walking around at the campground and I'm volunteering and everything, the conversations that I have, the interactions with others is a great reminder of my own worth because people are taking the time to have a conversation with me and I have something beautiful I can say. I can share some light and some love with someone else. And those are also, you know, great ways. So yeah, I can find that through engaging with others or in completely going within. All right, number two, some of these we can go through pretty fast because it's going to take us forever if we've got 12 of these. 12 (laughs) days of Christmas, wow. Yeah, prioritize you is number two. Yeah, we can kind of, I think we've said this already, you know, that how important it is, you know, when I hear that Bono song and you give yourself away and you give and you give and you give yourself away, you know, it's rare for us to stop and take care of ourselves or give ourselves permission. You know, it's not really something that we encourage in our American culture. Go drive, go do, go be. I mean, even just now, Ellie was just relaxing and just chilling and daydreaming, and I was asking her to read a book. She's like, why should I read a book? I'm just enjoying my day. I was like, okay. I, I mean, I see your point. Yeah. And so She read this morning. She yeah. wrote this morning. She was proud of her accomplishments, and she was just sitting in what is. And yet we look at that and go, well, yeah, that's, that's not productivity. Idle. You're idle. What are you doing? But when you're in a shower and you're idle and you have this spontaneously fantastic idea that changes your life, is that really idle? Right. Sometimes when we are in our down times of just rest and recharge, we come up with our most creative, brilliant work and our, our best gifts to give to the rest of the world. So prioritize yourself. Yeah. Um, make sure that you are, you know, not showing up as an exhausted shell of yourself, but you really are showing up recharged and ready to be able to give to anyone else. If you don't contribute to your own self-care, you're just going to be an empty shell. All right, number three is release the feelings that hold you down. How do you do this one? <laughs> this one I have, and I, I would love for anyone listening to go to mamasaysnamaste.com and click on the front page on this podcast episode and, um, and look at the picture that I share. It's from, it's, it was, I was scrolling through Instagram and there are some different accounts that I follow. And this account has these pictures of this little toddler and there are no words, nothing is said with it. I don't have any, any powerful quote to read or anything. It's simply looking at the images. And what you see is this little girl in super uh, super puffy jacket and cute little pigtails and she's absolutely adorable and she's looking back and then the next picture the next image is her um looks like she might be asking for something and i don't know for sure if there's a deeper story to it but i imagine knowing my sign language and everything i imagine that she's signing more in that that she wants something and the next picture is clearly a look on her face that says she's not getting what she wanted rejection (laughs) The next picture then is her all out frustration, head back, eyes closed, mouth wide open. She's wailing. Next picture, she's not only wailing and super mad. Now she's now she's mad. She's Mach got her 10. she's got her fists clenched. She's stomping her feet. She is angry. And then the next picture, she turns and she walks off. And I just imagine her at this point, angry, mad at the world, turns around. <sighs> takes a deep breath and somehow things become right again she goes through all the emotions of the letdown of what she thought was going to happen and and things turn around and the last image is her facing the camera again with a kissy face and she's she's doing a blowing a kiss to the camera we're doing duck lips and mad <laughs> mm. i don't I think don't know. so i think Let's it's a cute the one kiss. but I, I love, and, and, and you know, I'm writing a story for these images, but the images so um, convey a beautiful message, I think, of how to fully feel the feelings. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be sad. Where are you going from there, though? Is it I mean, is it something that you sit in the stew of, or is it something that you allow to pass through you? Yeah, and and I think the passing through, a lot of people get confused and like, well, how do I do that? You know, a lot of times I've found it's just sitting with a feeling and not 
not telling yourself you're bad or, you know, grinding yourself on that like a cheese grater. You just sit with it and just say, okay, this is it. Right? Yeah, if this was it, if, if I was this way for the rest of my life, all right, I'll just accept that. And gradually that feeling is going to go away. And you'll find that you're not that feeling forever. That these feelings are like waves that just come up and go. And you know how they're, when you're at the beach, there are those waves that you're trying to keep your feet from getting dry and you go back and forth and back and forth. And there's that one wave that takes you by surprise and swings you way back up the beach. Maybe even gets you a little wet. You know, those are those emotions that feel really strong and you've got to run back and just sit with them for a while. But they will recede and you can move on into another emotion because happiness is the same way. It will come up, it will swell, and it will recede. And... I have to ask I, I, again. We don't. We won't be spending as much time on all of these. But for Come this on. one, and with this this feeling, and when we're talking about health and wellness, literally here, um, can you share a little bit about when in 2020 you experienced facial paralysis? Oh yes, I got a tick. I I got bit by a tick, and I had Lyme's disease that was really progressive, and I didn't really know it. And so I woke up at like two o'clock one morning, and I went to the bathroom. I looked in the mirror and half of my face didn't work. And I thought, man, maybe I'll just go to sleep and it'll be gone when I wake up. And it wasn't. And I woke up and Ashley was like, oh, man, that's not looking good. And it kept getting worse and worse. And so I got went to the doctor and, um, you know, he was like, man, you're young. We just got to, you know, we don't have time to. to we can't even test you. Test we don't have time to run you through tests for Lyme these, disease. Take these we need and to, go. Yeah, we need and to I remember just it. kind of accepting like, okay. You know, this is just the way it's going to be because I, I, I guess I didn't really realize it at the time, but or I knew it, I didn't realize it was that high, but recovering from it was pretty minimal. So I was just like, okay, well, this is just the way it's going to be. And so I'll just deal with that. And so I was just genuinely me to the point where it kind of scared the kids because I would just laugh and just be me with this wild face because I was like, well, we got to get used to it. So I might as well try it out and see how it works. And slowly after I did that, it just a little, little bit by little bit, I can move the corner of my mouth. And a little bit more the next day, and a little bit more the next day. And so it only stayed really bad for maybe three or four days. But it was bad enough where I couldn't close my eye. I couldn't hold water in my mouth. I couldn't drink. I had to really manage to, like eating was a real challenge. I thought, well, I mean, it's just the way it's going to be. I guess I'm going to be eating soup for the rest of my life and, and I have think a napkin on my, on my belly. Right. And I think that, um, you know, before you'd had that, you've shared before about when you have had like a massage therapist was working on a knot and it was super tight and um, and you shifted your attention from I'm going to fight this knot and get it out to I'm going to love this knot. I'm going to just give it appreciation and love for what it lesson I can learn from it yep. and let it go. And when you did that, the therapist just, felt the it release. Just like, it turned in like soft butter. It yeah. went from hard butter to soft butter. It was the why I felt it. It felt like there was a little person holding on to some meat and let go. It was the wildest feelings I've ever had. And I've tried to you know, replicated at that severity before. I've never been able to do it where I just like unfolded a cinnamon roll, you know, it was like crazy. But I think that that, that idea was what then ca you carried into yeah. when you had the facial, facial paralysis. So it was like, okay, I can fight this and I can be pissed off about it. And well, I can, just I can where I'm at. force my body to defy this. This is not going to be who I am or I can work with it and love it. And so when you accepted it, it doesn't mean like you didn't work your face. You were working your muscles and you were, you were experimenting with what you could move constantly. But you were doing it with the with love and acceptance and hope for discovery. What yeah. can I, what can I discover? What what movement could I do? That yeah. you know. And so with those though, so much of that mindset was such a, a powerful contributor to your healing. Yeah, I totally believe that, and I've seen that happen over and over. Where just, you know, accepting, okay, this is it, and this is how, how it's going to be, or just letting go of the fear of, well, this is, this is going to limit. You know, once your heart and head go into limitation or woe is me, you know, that's some, that's some murky, murky quicksand. All right, number four is focus on what you want. Now, obviously, this one is pretty self-explanatory. We all have a natural negativity bias, and that's okay because that helps us remember, you know, when we get hurt and helps us to prevent the same thing from happening again. 
but it can be really easy to then fall into that's all we're seeing is all the things that we don't want in life which is a clear affirmation of bringing those things up again um, yeah. that it, it really can help to make those things show up more so think about what you want and start creating that um, start uh, going ahead of you know start expressing gratitude for those things that you want in life as if you already have them and see what happens when your mindset is more on those g- the positive of life versus those things that you're wanting to turn away from where your focus goes all your energy flows yeah and it's you know it's amazing the the life change that that just that little bit of mindset tweak change has mm-hmm. number 5 is make love the purpose and primary expression in your life and yeah, that sounds super cliche. Um, and but if I could come up with just one basic for everyone that could heal so much is just love yourself and love everyone else. That doesn't mean you have to love every action that they do at all. Maybe the only thing you're loving is just recognizing the fact that they are human too, all with all of their flaws and vulnerabilities. Yeah, I mean, just even accepting, you know, when you see something that frustrates you, there may have been a time in your life where that was you, right. where you did that. I've done that. And that's a lesson that they need to learn or that somebody else needs to walk through. And so how would you, how could you help that person through that situation rather than they're wrong, shame on them. And I get caught up in the same thing. Like this place here makes me a little grumpy because you know, there's, there's people, you know, you bark orders and you can, you can get into this kind of like, you know, we got to protect our seat, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And and you forget the hum- you can forget the humanity side of it that you know everybody's just trying to have fun and a good time right and we've had more times where we've come up and you know i just recently we had uh, we were patrolling our beach and one of the things we have to do is kind of keep the boaters away from the beach area where we have swimmers and keep them back and if they haven't paid to be a part of the park they can't be within a certain uh, foot range of the beach and so we had a, a boat that was pulled up to the side and we saw clearly that there were some people kind of hiding out on the beach, hanging out, enjoying it. I mean, we could have gone over there and jumped on their throats because they're on property that, you know, they, they were doing what they weren't supposed to do. Well, we just went in and checked in with them and come to find out, you know, they'd already talked to the park ranger um, at, earlier and they were mortified that they were um, that they had they had done something wrong. And we had a great conversation with them and they uh, they, you know, really quickly were like, you know, we, we recognize we want to be a good example for others and we don't want to th- I want others to think that this is OK. Yeah. So, you know, in. in it was just one of those where, you know, before we just jumped down that everybody's out to get you or sneaking around or untrustworthy, you know, what if we assume the best of them? What if they really were a sweet couple who's been coming to the same park for 30 years and always sitting in the same spot to watch the sunrise and they didn't realize that there were some rules that had changed? Yeah. So, you know, you don't know. All right. Number six is create fun in your life. Clearly, Nathan already brought that? that up earlier. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Since you know, you jump didn't ahead, know what Nate. was on the thing. Yeah. So bringing fun in your life. Yeah. And how many adults could answer that question? That's that's the number one challenge for you right there. What do you do for fun? What and would are you say? You doing it? Can you answer that? And when was the last time you did it? Number seven is healing the past and letting it go. It does not mean you have to dredge everything up, call everyone out who's ever done anything wrong to you and, uh, you know, and just do a rampage of clean up, clear out. Um, sometimes it can be only it's, it's 100 percent within. I went through a, an incredible healing journey this this year of going back into my past and processing through things. And um, and I had a book that was my biggest therapist. I listened to a book and I cried and I I read my old journals and I wrote other journals and I walked and I did Reiki healing in the shower and I did all of these different things um, to work through it without ever calling out anybody. I mean, some of my pains were, you know, it was an old boyfriend from high school that was that was a bad relationship. Well, do I really need to go track down that person and let them know that they hurt me? I don't really. I'm I'm okay. <laughs> no need to reconnect. Um, but I was able to feel and let go and recognize, you know, this girl that I was at that point, I carried a lot, I carried a lot of heaviness and, and I'm ready to love that girl and tell her it, we don't have to carry that anymore. And so therapy is 
there's so many ways of doing it. And it, it could be having a conversation with a friend or a loved one. It could be reading a book. It can be going to a counselor and really processing because you're stuck and need to need to kind of dig in a little bit as to what's holding you back. Um, it can be going to a coach like me and really having a conversation and moving forward. But he, holding on to the past is simply that heavy luggage that keeps you from moving forward. So heal the past and let it go. Determine what's really worth holding on to and how is it serving you now? Yeah, what are some of those feelings that honestly we drug up and, and slap our faces with that you, know, you don't really enjoy? You know, it's, right. it's almost like self de- self-deprivation or mm-hmm. you know, it's just it doesn't always help. And, you know, processing through it and coming to the other side of like, okay, well, this feel, you know, I can at least look at it from this angle or this feels okay. You know, that's, that seems to me like a place that, that feels better. Number eight is what do you contribute? When you help others, it's not just good for them. It feels good. It feels good to help. It feels good to be needed. It feels good to be appreciated. Um, when, I have somebody who's really down and out on themselves and lost in their own world of self-pity. First thing I do is encourage them to volunteer somewhere. Go get involved somewhere else. Pay attention to something beyond your own pain and recognize that there are others out there that may be a step behind you that can use the healing that you can offer. Yeah, one day at a homeless shelter, volunteering will kind of show you where life's situation really could be. And in healing others, boy, it, or in helping others, it so gives us a burst of energy and feelings of worthiness and um, feelings of hope and feeling good about doing something right and kind for someone else. And um, all of those things, oh, I mean, they, they help so much with your own health and well-being. And it requires bravery. You have, I mean, you're putting yourself out there and, and being willing to connect with another human being. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, it's, it's a, it can be... You know, don't let that be a deterrent. You know, have that a great be a great test of bravery and and practice. Right, because when we think of others and how we impact them, we become more conscious and aware of the bigger roles that we all play in each other's lives. Now, number nine is commit to health and well-being. If you don't believe that you have the potential to be fully healed, you're not going to. <laughs> right. It's just that simple. Your your belief systems definitely. Uh, definitely impact you and I mean we've read we read story after story and actually in both books in, in Man's Search for Meaning and in Peace, Love and Healing that were stories of you know medical miracles people that by all means should have died but didn't and then people who probably could have made it but didn't because they just decided they were done Yeah, they accepted that this is my death and I'm ready to go and and that was the interesting thing about peace, love, and healing was, and just kind of that commitment to well-being. You know, well-being. If you think about that word, is is your being. Uh, you know, what is, what are you being? <laughs> what what are you doing every single day that is adding value, and making you feel good and and special? And are you encouraging that part of yourself, or do you go into the day and just get yourself beat up every day? And I mean, I used to be in that that space of you know, kind of the martyrdom and that I, I thought that's what feeling good and helping was, was giving all of myself away until I realized how little I was giving Mm. with, with, you know, a third of a cup of myself Mm -hmm. prepared to be there. Yeah. Notice we have priority, prioritize yourself before we have, um, giving to others because we're not suggesting martyrdom. I feel like Nathan and I both live, um, in a lot of ways, um, with a focus on giving and serving others. And we have very clear boundaries on our time and our recharge in order to be able to do that. And so when people say, oh, you're so generous, I'm like, "Mm, because I have been very conservative with my own time because I have um, held back and said, no, this is where I need to recharge so that I can give. Um, you know, this is where I need to build up our nest egg so that we have the, the finances to be able to donate. It's where I've taken that time to leave and go get a good night's sleep because 
I'm not going to be able to help if I'm drained. Well, I, mean, I think that's taking what we care forget. of yourself so you can give better. That well-being nest egg. You know, that's a great example of, you know, if you think about money and energy as the same thing, you know, you have to do things to get money and you have to do things to get energy. You have to go to sleep. You have to eat good food. You have to stretch your body and move it. You have to love yourself. I mean, these are all things that you have to do to show up. Mm-hmm. And so it's so easy to just... I mean, I just remember grinding myself and remember thinking I was going to last forever. Mm. But, mm. you know, we all ripen at different stages. So number 10 is accept growth opportunities. There you go. Are your trials and tribulations, your excuses you're trapped in, or are they stepping stones for your growth? It's n- Your life is not always going to go as planned. Life is messy. You're going to have those times that it seems like it is an absolute valley and it's way more struggle. There's failure. There's rejection. There's disappointment. All of these different things. Where do we go from here? Are you going to sit in the stew or are you going to look at what can I learn from this? What does this make possible? Um, you know, there's a whole section in the Peace, Love, and Healing book that talks about that and how um, how these people, you know, who share that the di- their disease was their biggest gift that they got because yeah. of what it awakened in them. Um, you know, th- we hear these stories time and time again about, yeah, I'm so grateful for this horrible thing that happened, you know, yeah. losing my legs, having being diagnosed with cancer, um, you know, our, I mean, our reality explosion up, was the greatest thing that ever happened to us or to me. Yeah. Yeah. When our whole idea of what was happy family and comfort at home kind of shifted. Um, yeah, that was that was something that, yeah, it's, it's not that we want bad things to happen in our lives. But can we look at what lesson and what opportunity is in it? to be able to make it something powerful. I mean, I I look at so many people, for example, when it comes to actual physical illness, how many people are spokespeople, you know, uh, with cancer or, um, or people with, uh, that are amputees or that had some form of, of, uh, disability and they, and it's become their, um, their message to the world. Yeah. Their message of hope to the world. And um, and we see all these elements of inspiration in it every single time. It's a person who has chosen to see what is what is clearly a negative and and decide what can they make out of it. Yeah. What is this? What does this make possible then? What am I? Am I just this disease waiting to die or is there am I living until till I die? And, you know, that's what this book really talks about is living fully until you die because we're all going to die we never know when and a lot of us live with this attitude that well i'm going to suffer for this portion of my life and then i'm saving this section of my life at the end to relax and enjoy it and i have been living with the people that had that mindset for the last six years and i have not i have not met a whole lot of them that are relaxed and enjoying it they're usually pissed and angry that nobody's doing what they want still And they're Mm -hmm. frustrated that this has happened and this has happened. And if kids weren't in the pool, then I could enjoy myself. Or if the sun wasn't so bright, it'd be a little better. You know, there's always something. Mm -hmm. And that can be your MO. And so, you know, it's kind of stopping. And I like this next one, number 11, which helps is to laugh often. You've you know, added a lot of laughter in my life. Have I? <laughs> yes, very much so. You didn't laugh before me? Oh, I laughed. I, I definitely did. But uh, you added, um, you play and fun and laughter is a okay. lot of who you are yeah. that I fell in love with, that I wanted more of in my life, I think. Mm. And so, I mean, I, th- I think that was part of the magnet that drew me to you was um, was seeing that, that hey, it's okay to have some fun. It's okay to play and lighten up and loosen up. And we have both lightened up a lot in different areas. Yeah. Well, and not taking yourself so seriously. Right. Kind of lets down that armor that you keep all tight in your chest to protect yourself and your heart from getting hurt. There's, you know. Sometimes there's really fun little things to do. I mean, we found like, oh my gosh, the number of times over my whole life that I can that I can think of people in my life who 
I never see cry, never, don't show all these emotions. And then we're playing a game and they're laughing so hard they're crying. I have seen more men yes. in my family cry from laughter than anything else um, from playing games. And uh, and so, you know, playing games can be a really fun way to um, add in some laughter. And it's maybe watching that. a silly video. Um, I remember one time uh, we had a great time trying to all throw skip skip rocks with our opposite hands yes. instead of i'm left-handed so i was doing it right-handed but uh, everybody else being right-handed people would be trying to throw left-handed and how goofy it was and how silly it was and it's just something silly and like laughing at ourselves for our own awkwardness and how weird it felt find little things to bring laughter and joy in your life and then number 12 Pay attention to what you reinforce. I was thinking about that when you were talking about that, you know, we're going to struggle forever and then we're going to, or struggle for this first stretch and then we're going to have fun. Well, if I've reinforced the struggle for 30 plus years of my life, how in the world am I going to just flip a switch and be happy-go-lucky? I haven't seen it happen yet. I, I, I mean, I'll be honest, I haven't seen it. And I talked to a lot of people who are still, you know, loving retirement enjoying you know i'm lazy they say i take a full advantage of it but i also hear the you know somebody's you know somebody's mad at me about this or can you believe that this has happened and this is just mm -hmm. i can't believe that you know i can't believe how many i can't believe you just said you know i, <laughs> I haven't said that <laughs> i said i haven't said that in a long time so, I mean, it was because we you, don't say can't. It's won't. I know. It's I, and, and you think about that same I won't believe this. I won't believe that. That's a really angry person right there. There you go. Just ignore the reality of the situation. But, you know, that, that, that analogy of a river flowing um, is, really, is really true. I mean, when you get uh, grinding and, and you want a struggle, the current's always going to be there for you. It really will. Uh, it will push against you, or you can go with it. Either one. Um, you know, I, I don't know about the fine line of perseverance and when you drop off. I mean, you, you probably will hang on longer than I would for, for way, way <laughs> more. I, I like to just, okay, fine. We'll see what's next. That has something to do with personality styles and our different, uh, different drives and ambitions and the things that we are skilled in. Um, you know, Nathan is more skilled at finding ease and, um, and being support where I may be more skilled at pushing forward and persevering yeah absolutely so um they're different strengths and, and they're valuable in different scenarios and um and can be a negative in others yeah. so you see how you use them a successful life is not about avoiding death it's about living well so think about that what are you reinforcing? Are you reinforcing how you are living well? Or are you reinforcing how you just don't die today? Hmm. That's a very different approach toward life. So our challenge is to pay close attention to this list. Let me read them again. Number one, do things that validate your own worth. Number two, prioritize you. Number three, Release the feelings that hold you down. Number four, focus on what you want.